Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we're talking about some amazing tech shown off at GDC. There's two new metaverses to discuss, including one from Ramen VR, the developers of Zenith, and we have a long list of exciting new VR games and updates to go over. Like normal, there are links and timestamps down in the description, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, one of my favorite sites for VR accessories. They just released some brand new Quest 2 hand straps that'll give you that Valve Index feel and allow you to completely let go of the controllers. They also have plenty of other accessories like controller weights for those of you who work out in VR, cable management systems, and my favorite accessory, their super durable and extra comfy Quest 2 Elite strap. There are links down in the description and don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start this video off like normal with my personal check-in, and I am currently preparing for a two-week European vacation that starts this Saturday, April 2nd. So unfortunately, you can expect a lack of new videos throughout the month of April. And honestly, this is giving me some serious anxiety because I am truly dedicated to this channel and my community. Now I am planning to meet up with some UK based fellow content creators. And if you're interested in me posting some blog style videos during my trip, please let me know down in the comments. In other news, I'm currently testing two new games that have truly impressed me. The first one is the open beta for The Patcher, which I briefly spoke about last week. It's a competitive multiplayer title with PvP, PvE, and even PvP VE. Honestly, I haven't tried anything else out there quite like this game, and it starts off with one hell of an intro. Now, the second game I'm testing is going to remain a secret for right now, but I will say it's one of the best single player campaigns I've tried since Resident Evil 4 and Half-Life Alex. but that's most likely overselling it a bit. Now, I'm currently working on a review of that title, and if all goes well, it will be released while I'm on vacation. Okay, so let's move on to the new releases, starting with the title that I actually missed last week. The strategy-based city builder Townsman VR has left early access and is now officially released. Starting off stranded on an island, you'll guide your townspeople into a prosperous community by directly taking control of their actions in a near godlike fashion. Now I've played a few hours of a pre-release version and I was definitely impressed. Not only is it a beautiful world, but it's a new take on a classic game genre. So if you've been looking for this style of game, Townsman VR is an easy recommendation. Next up, releasing today is a new tower defense title, Now There Be Goblins. Now this is an early access release that will have you not only building towers, but jumping down into a first person mode and bringing the battle to the enemy. There's plenty of gear to unlock, different ways to synergize your defenses, and you can even use the environment to your advantage. I'm a sucker for tower defense games, so at some point, I'm definitely gonna have to try this one out. Speaking of games I have to try out, there's a few more on this week's list, starting with Transformers Beyond Reality. This officially licensed on-rails shooter is coming to both Steam VR and the PlayStation VR, and it's basically a dream come true to a childhood Mateo 311. I grew up watching the Transformers cartoon and playing with the toys, so I could easily put aside the fact that this looks like an on-rails shooter and just go in hoping for the best. I thoroughly enjoyed another mech-based on-rails shooter, Archangel, so there's definitely hope here. But the one thing that's really throwing me off, for a title that's scheduled to release in just a few days, there's no official Steam or PlayStation VR page. So I can't even officially confirm if this just looks like an on-rails shooter or if it really is one. Moving on to a title that I'm even more excited to try is Moss Book 2. The sequel to my favorite puzzle platformer is dropping this Thursday. As of right now, it's a PlayStation VR exclusive, but I do expect that the change in the future, mainly because everyone should get to share this journey with Quill. Book 2 is promising to introduce new weapons, new ways to interact with the world and Quill herself, and an overall more robust experience. Now, my previously mentioned vacation will prevent me from releasing any coverage on this game, but I'm sure you'll hear me talking about it later down the road. Now, if high school wasn't awkward enough for you, why not experience the Alien High School Cosmonius High? From the same developers that brought us Job Simulator, you're now crash landing into high school, unlocking some magical powers, and saving everyone from a series of mysterious malfunctions. This looks to be an extremely vibrant and quirky ride that I'm sure plenty of VR gamers will enjoy. Now, last up on this week's releases is another tower defense title, Mythic Defenders. Now, rather than getting up close and personal in the action, you'll get to use your archery skills for extra defense in a similar fashion to what we've seen from Valve's Longbow demo in their VR title, The Lab. This battle against mythological creatures will not only challenge your tower defense skills, but most likely also your shoulder strength endurance. So if you do happen to be a tower defense fan, you have two completely different style titles that you can pick up this week. 
Okay, so let's move on to some new game announcements, starting with the Roguelite FPS Mother Gunship Forge. Now, this is a follow up to the 2018 flat screen title Mother Gunship, but now you get to experience it in VR. You can bring a friend along and you're going to be forging a series of crazy new weapons. This journey through the belly of an alien mothership is also promising some fast paced bullet hell style action. I'm definitely interested in checking this one out when it releases in June. Now, if you prefer to slow the pace down and tabletop RPGs are more your style, the Quest Haven Kickstarter is now up and it's already surpassed its goal of $50,000. Quest Haven will allow you to experience any TTRPG like Dungeons and Dragons from not only a flat screen perspective, but also diving right into the world from a VR perspective. This is a dream come true for tabletop fans like myself, and I really hope they can pull this off. There's a link to the Kickstarter down in the description if you wanna check out some more information. While we're on the topic of Kickstarters, the anime inspired VR title, Runes Magus, tried to launch worldwide in this manner, but failed to secure the necessary funds. But it's not all bad news because they have found a publisher and will be releasing this spring. Runes Magus is a story-driven experience with some beautiful anime graphics where you'll gain magic abilities and engage in epic boss fights. After playing the Tales of Anogoro, it's clear that anime style graphics really shine on the quest and I can't wait to see what this title has to offer. Now if anime, shooters, and tabletop games aren't your style, both the PlayStation VR and Quest are getting an official NFL game. Now information is sparse, but this is supposedly a simulation title, which is player made and player tested. So maybe this will eventually be a killer app for the football fans out there, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Okay, so let's move into some new metaverse discussions, and I'm gonna do my best to stay as positive as I possibly can. The topic of the metaverse generally makes me sigh, but I think there's a silver lining here. Developers Ramen VR, best known for the creation of the recently released MMO Zenith, have secured $35 million in Series B funding, which they will use to develop Zenith into a metaverse platform. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you would know that Zenith just wasn't for me, and I still personally feel that they failed to deliver on the promises they made back in the original Kickstarter campaign. But putting all of that aside, there's one fact that's undeniable here, and that Zenith is a technological achievement for VR. Are. The fact that their game even runs on the original Quest is absolutely amazing. So a metaverse project is in good hands with Ramen VR, but in terms of money, 35 million isn't much when dealing with MMOs or metaverse creation. And I'm also a little skeptical of the overall direction, as Ramen has stated this money will allow them to double the size of their studio and transform Zenith into a gaming super app across VR, desktop, and mobile. Now that sounds like more general broad metaverse style promises, which tend to turn me off. Now another metaverse project stems from Qualcomm, the developers of the Snapdragon processor found in many smartphones, and even the MetaQuest. Rather than just trying to create their own new metaverse, just like everyone else, they've opened up a $100 million fund to help progress metaverse-based technologies. Now, for a gamer, this might sound pretty bland, but for the industry overall, it's extremely beneficial. There's plenty of software and hardware developers out there who are interested in creating a robust metaverse experience, but just don't have the money to get started. Now, making this project more exciting, Qualcomm has already partnered with the game development studio Square Enix, in order to create some new AR content. And TikTok parent company ByteDance is also signed on. So while this isn't currently a flashy project, it'll most likely lead to some exciting stuff down the road. And overall, it's in Qualcomm's best interest because a more robust metaverse will allow them to sell more hardware. Speaking of hardware, we recently got a lot of new hands-on tech demos from the GDC. Now I can make another entire video on just this topic, but I wanted to highlight some of the exciting stuff, starting with the Tilt 5 AR game board. I've been interested in this project for quite some time, but it was great to get people I actually know like Skiva and Alex from Between Realities to sample this device and tell you what they actually think about it. From a technical standpoint, it looks like a high quality product. And if each headset can be successfully powered off your cell phone, this can be an amazing social experience. As someone who grew up playing local co-op, I miss that type of gameplay. And Tilt 5 looks like it can replace that, but with a new age twist. If they can also get something like Roll20 running on this, it would be my go-to for tabletop gaming. Now, after these hands-on demos, I'm not fully convinced on this product, but I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it. Now, another piece of exciting tech that I'm not fully sold on just yet is the Manus Quantum Meta Glove, which is currently looking impressive, but most likely not for practical applications. Hand tracking will never replace a controller for gaming, and this product is most likely to be used for motion capture or maybe even VTubers. 
Regardless of what impact the technology will have for gamers, it's always good to see VR tech progressing, as some elements usually trickle down to practical use. Okay guys, we have one more story to go over, and that's Meta is finally addressing the poor video capture experience on the Quest itself. If you're a content creator, you know this struggle. You'll record some video on your Quest, and you'll experience things like full file corruption, audio desync, and you also have to deal with the odd one by one aspect ratio. Now you can adjust some of these settings through ADB commands, but they usually result in decreased headset performance. Now starting in either April or May, Meta plans to address these issues. There's no specifics just yet, but let's hope we get a 16 by nine aspect ratio, a progressive file format, so if the quest dies while you're recording, you don't lose all of your footage, and finally some codec enhancements, so we get the best possible visual experience at the lowest possible bitrate. But we'll see what ends up happening, and if Meta manages to break anything on your quest in the process of releasing these new features. Now this was actually a pretty long video, and I still left out a bunch of other topics. If there was something you think I should have mentioned, please let me know down in the comments. But for now, that was the new VR news. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.